Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about a very difficult topic, very difficult to understand, especially if you are not from Argentina, because we are talking about the economical situation here in the country. Argentina has made headlines all over the world with its super high inflation rate. And I'm going to try to explain you a little bit about why this has happened in the past years and also how you can actually save quite a lot of money if you understand how to get, for example, cash here in the country, which is harder than I had expected. So I'm hoping that this video is going to help future travelers here in Argentina to understand a little bit the situation and also to save money while traveling through the country. Let's start to talk about the economy in Argentina. Argentina is the highest inflation rate worldwide with about 200% of inflation rate, which is absolutely insane. If you think about it in Europe, for example, in 2022, we had the highest inflation rate of Europe, which was around 9%, which was a lot. We were complaining a lot about increasing prices. Now imagine how it is with an inflation rate of 200%. The government had a lot of problems to control this inflation rate in recent years and different problems have caused this inflation. For example, Argentina is a country that has a lot of debts. Argentina has faced a lot of problems with the devaluation of their peso. A devaluation of money always occurs once the currency loses a lot more value in comparison to other currencies. And this devaluation of the peso has led to a lot of problems, not only to the high inflation, but it also has a huge impact on the life of Argentinians. That is simply because a lot of prices increase, meaning that people are having troubles to keep paying their bills since the prices increase way faster than their salary, for example. One small example, I am here since two weeks now. And if you've seen the first video that I made, you may have noticed that I mentioned that I am taking public transportation here in Buenos Aires, which cost me 56 pesos, which was more or less six cents of a dollar. Now one bus ticket is 92 pesos, which still is less than 10 cents of a dollar, meaning it won't have a huge impact on your budget. But think of it, this is actually a price increase of more or less 45%, which is huge. And this is happening with a lot of things. You will notice that in a lot of windows, you will see prices that are handwritten, so they can easily erase them and change them probably on a monthly basis or something like that. Now, there are a lot of ways to get cash here in the country. And I'm going to explain you some that I've tried, some that make me lose money, so make sure to learn from my mistake and how you can actually get cash here in Argentina. We are in the Avenida Florida, which is quite a famous street. Since here on the street, you can not only buy a lot of things, there are lots of stores and so on, but also there are a lot of people here on the street screaming something like cambio, cambio, which means change. So here you can actually exchange your dollars into pesos. Let's walk a little bit down the street and I will explain you more about it. Now, one thing that you should definitely know is this application here. It is called Dollar Blue Oi. And in this application, you can also check the change rates for the dollar. Since these are changing basically on a daily basis, I would definitely recommend you to download this application here because you will always have the current exchange rate. Now, there are three dollars that are important for you. As you can see, there are six different dollar types currently, but three of them are actually important. So I'm going to quickly explain you what this means. There is the dollar official, which is the exchange rate that you can find, for example, on Google. This is the exchange rate that you would also get if you exchange your dollars in an official exchange place. A second one that is important for you would be the dollar map. The dollar map is made for people with international credit cards. So meaning whenever you pay with your international credit card, you will get the exchange rate of the dollar map. I tried this with several 
cards that I have and it worked with my debit and credit card from Germany, with a credit card from Spain, a credit card from the US and I don't know why but it didn't work with my Revolut which is also an international card but somehow I lost a little bit there so I would recommend you to try your cards out and check a little bit the exchange rate on your bank statement so that you know that this actually works for your card. Then the third one that you should know about is the dollar blue and the dollar blue is the exchange rate that you will get if you decide to exchange your dollars on the streets for example here on the Avenida Florida. Now those exchange rates are different. The worst one that you can get would be the dollar official so I would recommend you to try to avoid that and the best ones are the dollar map and the dollar blue. Both are quite similar by now. There used to be a huge difference and the dollar blue used to be the better option. At some parts the dollar blue is the better option, sometimes the dollar map, but really the difference is not that big. Let's dive into how to exchange money on the street. Now I'm not sure if you can hear the voices in the background, but as I told you before, there are people on this street that constantly call Cambio. So with those persons, you can exchange your dollar bills into pesos. One very important thing here is that you actually have to bring a dollar bill of $100. Everything that is smaller won't get exchanged for the same rate. I'm not sure what is the reason behind that, but it is what it is. Make sure to bring $100 bills. I exchanged that once and one other important hint here is ask several people about the rate. First check it on your application of course, but then also ask a few different people here on the street because there might be a little difference of the exchange rate. Now if you decide to exchange dollars, I also recommend you to not exchange all the dollars you brought due to the inflation. I have for example exchanged $100 for an exchange rate of 1000 pesos when I came here. By now the exchange rate would be 1200 pesos, meaning I kind of lost 200 pesos, but that is how it is. Always exchange like whatever you need on one day and then exchange it little by little. You can also exchange euros, but I noticed that sometimes the exchange rate is actually the same as the exchange rate for dollars, which means you would be losing a little bit of money because one euro is worth a little bit more than one dollar. Anyway, that is also an option. Also, same rule here. If you want to exchange euros, bring 100 euro bills. Now, if you decide to do this on the street, you would talk to a person, they would tell you the exchange rate, and then once you agree, you would go into one of those buildings that you see here and there's like a tiny office where they actually exchange the dollar bill you gave them into pesos and you will get a lot of pesos. $100 for example is currently around 1200 pesos and since the biggest peso bill is 2000 pesos that means that you will get a huge staple of money. Now you might think, why do you even have to exchange money if you can pay everything with card for more or less the same exchange rate? Well, there's one reason, because you will save money. Actually, there are a lot of hotels, especially in the touristic regions, that will ask you to either pay in cash or with card. But whenever you pay with card, you will pay about 12 to 15% more. Actually, one time I wanted to rent a car and there was an increase in price increase of 30%, which is a huge difference. So there are things that are definitely worth to pay with cash, although this is quite unhandy because again, if you, for example, want to pay a hotel for like three nights or you want to rent a car for three, four days, whatever, you will have to bring a lot of cash and they also have to count it, which, yeah, is not that easy and takes a lot of time and patience also. Now for me personally, it was a little bit unhandy to bring a lot of dollars into the country, which is why I decided to just bring a few dollars to exchange them on the street. And then I thought I can always get cash from the bank, right? I wish it would have worked that way, but no, it is a little bit more complicated here in Argentina and I'm going to show you why. 
obviously an ATM has only a limited amount of space, right? So there is still the same amount of built in the ATM as it used to be 10 years ago, whatever. But the problem is with the high inflation, the money has a lower value, meaning that the same amounts of bills that are in that ATM value way less. So that is why actually today you can only withdraw a very limited amount of cash at an ATM. If you want to withdraw an amount that is higher than 15,000 pesos, the ATM won't let you. It will say that the amount that you can withdraw in one day has been exceeded. So 15,000 pesos today is less than $15. Now you can see the problem with $15 you won't get that far. Of course, you can withdraw it, but they will actually charge you a fee of 8,000 pesos, which is, again, almost $8. Does it make sense to pay $8 for $15 of cash? Not really. That is why I do not recommend you at all to withdraw money at an ATM. It just won't get you far. What I do recommend you, though, is Western Union. If you have the same problem as I did, for me, it was hard to get cash because, as I mentioned before, I didn't bring that many dollar bills and, well, I needed to pay the hotels and the car rental and so on. So I sent myself money via Western Union. That is possible and you will get the exchange rate of the dollar map, which is the dollar that you actually pay for an international transaction. Now with Western Union there's also a little problem because if you want to withdraw that money you should definitely do that during the week and as early during the day as possible because again they also have a limited amount of cash obviously and the more cash you want to get the harder it will be. So also if you want to withdraw money with Western Union of course you will pay a small fee which is kind of what you need to keep in mind to balance it out. You will want to withdraw enough money to be able to pay your bills, but also not too much money in order to be able to actually receive the money easily. The more money you want to receive, the harder it will get to find a Western Union that has so many bills. Actually, they told me that up to 1 million pesos it is possible without any problems, but I wouldn't necessarily trust on that, especially if you are not in Buenos Aires, but further outside in small accounts or whatever, where the possibilities are not that huge and there aren't that many Western Unions. Nevertheless, Western Union is a really good chance here to withdraw cash. Now, I know this is quite a complicated topic, so let me summarize it a little bit for you. Again, my recommendation is to download the application Dollar Blue Oi, which will always give you the current exchange rate. Make sure to focus on the Dollar Map and the Dollar Blue, which are the two more important exchange rates for you as a foreigner. The best two options, in my opinion, are clearly to either exchange money on the streets. If you have cash, make sure that it's a $100 bill or to simply pay with card. I did a mixture of cash and card, so whenever I was able to pay with a card, for example in restaurants or when I bought things, I paid everything with card, but everything else, such as hotels or a car rental, I paid those things in cash. Now, if you do not feel comfortable with bringing too many dollar bills with you into the country, make sure to have an account at Western Union because this way you will easily be able to send yourself some money and get it in a Western Union office for the exchange rate of the dollar map. Now I hope this was a little bit helpful for you to understand the situation here in Argentina today in January 2024. Things here are changing quickly so in a couple of months it may be a little bit different. But anyway, make sure to inform yourself to come here prepared. If there are any open questions or if you didn't understand something, make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section. I always answer all of the comments. And also, if you found this video helpful and if you enjoyed it, make sure to drop me a like because you will support my work a lot by doing this. And I am going to show you more of the country. I will show you the most epic places here in Argentina. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any further videos. 
And you also have the option to follow me on my social media accounts because I am always a little bit delayed with my videos and on social media you will always see where I'm currently at. This was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one.